Good morning checkmates, welcome back to the channel. Today we investigate something that commonly impacts 206cc drivers, wind. Now yes, it's an unusual topic, but you'll understand where I'm going when you see this. One of the main things you get, not just with Peugeots, but with any car really that has sort of pillarless, frameless doors, is potential wind noise when they get old. Now this can be done from many things cause wind noise, um, you know, misaligned doors, misaligned door windows, faulty weather strips. The wind noise is a bit of a pain. Obviously you can't eliminate all of it on a car like this, but you can reduce it. And as the vehicle ages, you tend to notice that it gets more and more. There are some things that you can do. Personally, I've actually had the experience with this in the last fortnight or so. Now this was because of the door striker. Now the door striker on the passenger side actually unscrewed slightly so it was rattling around i'll show you a picture of that momentarily which meant that it dropped significantly now because of that uh, the door didn't shut properly when the door was, was closed and attached to the striker there was still a huge gap now that only didn't look very good which you can see from the picture um, the wind noise was atrocious and it was only it took me a couple of days to figure out that's where it was coming from once I'd adjusted it, it was fine. Now I will show you in a minute how to do that. You can do it uh, a quick, dirty way by the roadside if you need to, or there is a proper way of doing it, but I'll try and explain both. Okay, so as you can see, this is what the door striker looks like when it's not actually attached to the vehicle. It moves around and it's not supposed to do that because that's what holds the car door in place when you shut it. Now, as you can see, this moves up and down and side to side. So ultimately, if you think about it, you can see where it's kind of supposed to be because of the dirt. But if you move it all the way out, or it's extended fully too far this way, when the door closes, it doesn't close properly because it latches too early. So as an example, this obviously is with the, the door striker fully towards the exterior of the vehicle. You can see the door gap is enormous. You know. And if it's pushed too far back, the door overcloses and it latches too late, and therefore you end up striking the side of the vehicle. And as you can see, although the door gap looks pretty good, if you come around this side, you can just make out the door is too far in. This is in a lot further. This should be smooth and my finger stops there. So literally the, the door is in too far. So this needs to be in exactly the right place, really. You can do it by eye at the side of the road. Obviously that's, you know, within reason, you can kind of compare it to the other door. Um, but there are sort of slightly more professional ways that you can do it using sellotape and measuring them. But I will leave that up to you. I'll, I'll put a, a photograph of the better way of doing it. But for this one, I'll show the uh, quick and dirty roadside fix should you get into an emergency. Here's an example, it's just a cheap set that I bought from Halfords uh, a long time ago. Various Torx ones, this is a T30, um, as I say, T27, sort of get away with an emergency, but if you're very careful, but T30 is the way forward. So, it's just a case, two bolts, one at the top, uh, to undo it, obviously can it counterclockwise, it's in, and releases it, and it is a case, I say releases it, releases it, I mean apologies, and then you literally have to just adjust it to a midpoint. Now, if you are by the side of the road, it's a bit of a bit of a dark art to try and get it right. If you are actually at home and you want to do it officially properly and you've got the time, you can actually mask a bit of masking tape along the bottom, a bit of masking tape along the top, and take the measurement from the other side, um, from this point to this point, and from this point to this point, and obviously match them up and screw them in that way. But for the purpose of this, I'll just I'll just do it this way. You'll get the idea. And there you have it, tight. So now I'll try and slam the door and see how it works. Okay, so see how we get on, now we've done it. Excellent, completely flat, and that's all you need to do. That in itself will reduce the wind noise quite considerably. If you do that for both doors, you'll soon notice a difference. As you can see, always check the weather strips along the, the top of the vehicle. You're looking for weak spots or crumbling rubber, cracks or any kind of damage at all. That will lead to water ingress, but it will also lead to noise. So if you can check the strips all the way around, there is different products that you can purchase to uh, to coat them with, to keep them, to treat the rubber. But to be honest, the age of this vehicle, you are you are looking at either trying to, to maintain them or, or replace them if you need to. You are going to be able to do certain things to stop the wind noise, but ultimately you are at the mercy of, of how good the quality of the rubber seals are. Well, there you go. I hope that was of some use. As I say, I did try on my vehicle and it has worked a lot. So hopefully someone out there, if you have the same problem, you can try that and it will make it a little bit more pleasant to drive. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you appreciate our content. It does mean a lot. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye bye.